All right. So really good textures can add so much extra detail to your scenes and models. So today I figured we could work on some tricks that I've learned for making my textures look better. Um, we're going to start out with a concrete texture. Uh, it's pretty basic. I'm just going to add in a cube and I'm going to go into the shader and then I'm going to name it concrete. And then I am going to add in this image of concrete that I downloaded off the internet. I'm going to plug it into the base color for the principal shader and then you're all done except it doesn't really look very good. So uh, let's fix that. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to press U cube project to stretch the image to the cube. And then I'm going to, uh, let's fix the specular first. So I'm going to drag from the specular to the image and that already looks way better. Um, let's give it um, some bump. So I'm going to drag from the normal to the image. I'm going to add in a bump node here and I'm going to plug this into the height and I'm going to turn down the uh, strength here because this is way too bumpy. And uh, I'm going to press invert here and uh, that's looking a little better. It just tweak this a little bit till it looks nice. Cool. Unfortunately, I think this looks a little flat though. So I'm going to add in a nice image of some rusted concrete and this is going to be for our roughness map. Um, now I'm going to use something called the node wrangler. You can enable this in the add-ons. This allows me to do extra controls like control shift clicking on this to select it and then pressing control T to bring up this uh, mapping node. So now I can change the size of uh, how many times this gets repeated. I'm going to give it something kind of smaller here, but just so there's some extra repeats. Cool. I'm going to add in a color ramp and plug this in here and then I'm going to jack up the uh, darks and bring down the brights. The bright meaning it's flat and the dark meaning it's reflective. So now if I plug this in you can see that our cube is much more shiny but it's honestly maybe a little too shiny so I'm going to duplicate this over and plug it into the specular. And now I'm going to make this uh, dark because for the specular dark is less shiny and white is more shiny if that makes any sense. Um, I'm going to add in a mix shader here and I'm going to plug in this, uh, the roughness map here as well to the, uh, specular. So we have both mixing a little bit and, um, actually, yeah, that's looking all right. Um, I might plug this in here instead. So that way it already has the, um, color ramp on it. Unfortunately, there's just still too much roughness. Uh, it's way too uh, shiny, so I'm bringing the white even farther across, and that looks way better. Now we have these little pockets of like reflectiveness, and it just looks much, much better. All right, so this is looking pretty cool, except it's a little boring. So I'm going to duplicate over this uh, mix shader, and I'm going to add in this picture of moss. And this moss is going to be uh, kind of throughout the cube to give it some weathered look. So I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to drag it in. And off the bat, like, it's looking okay. It's not great. I'm going to control T to bring up the mapping and make the size smaller, and that looks a little bit better. I'm going to plug our original uh, concrete texture here into the factor. So now I can use that to control how much of each we see. I'm going to duplicate up one of these color ramps and I'm going to make sure that one side is really dark and the other side is really just white. We want complete opposites for the contrast. You'll see why in a second. So now we can uh, we can drag each one of these in a little bit um, to really make the other value pop. So I'm going to bring up the black and I'm going to bring up the white so they meet in the middle. And now we have this really pronounced concrete and moss texture on here. Okay, nice. I'm going to drag all this over just a little bit so we have room to plug this new mix into the uh, bump. So now we have both of these creating bump. Um, I'm also going to do the same for the specular I'm thinking. I'm going to drag the specular mix forward and I'm going to replace it here with our new mix. There. Um, I'm going to duplicate over this uh, color ramp and use that to tweak the specular just a little bit again so that way the moss will be included just a little bit more. Okay. And that's the whole process right there. Honestly, you can keep going and adding in more textures if you want, but I think that looks pretty good and it's good enough for this right now. I hope you're able to follow along because that's a lot of node work right there. 
All right, let's make some glass. I'm gonna add a plane here and in edit mode, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. And I'm going to add in a new uh, material and I'm gonna name it glass, of course. I'm gonna delete the principled shader and I'm gonna add in a glossy and a transparent shader. And I'm gonna mix those together and uh, plug them in to the surface. Once you do that, you'll get this kind of see-through. I'm going to make it a little bit more uh, transparent. And um, I'm going to add in this nice picture of the dirty metal again. Okay, I'm going to plug this in here, and that looks good like it is. So I'm going to plug it into the roughness. That already looks pretty nice, but I want it to be a little bit more reflective. So I'm going to add in a uh, color ramp, and I'm going to turn up the dark here, and I'm going to turn the white down to kind of more of a gray. So that way, it only really uh, shows up that it's uh, rough only when the light's hitting it. Um, I'm going to add in this picture of uh, this fingerprinted clay, and this is going to be uh, mixed in here because it looks like it has little fingerprints on it, and it'll be great for glass. So I'm going to add in a mix shader here, and I'm going to plug this in here, except it's much too big, so I'm going to control T it and turn the scale way down, maybe even a little smaller than that, actually. I'm going to tweak the mix so there's even less of the fingerprints in than there are, and that looks better, but it's just a little too uh, much still, so I'm going to duplicate down this color ramp, and I am going to, uh, yeah, that looks actually pretty darn good right there. Cool. So this is just kind of a pipeline on how I go about texturing things. It really works well when you have a flat image of a certain thing, and then you can mix in uh, textures of other things to kind of uh, reinforce the uh, specular and the roughness. Yeah, and I just advise doing it for uh, projects when you're working on texturing in general because it really helps add realism. Anyways, I will see you in the next video.